morning, everyone. It's so great to be here and speak with you all. I know fearlessness has been your liturgical theme this past year, and I'm excited to share with you how fear has manifested in my life. As I'm sure many of you can relate to, one of my earliest fears in high school was the fear of failing academically. The number of times when I broke down from stress the night before an exam were too many to count. And it took several reminders from my mom, who's here in the audience by the way, to feel confident about my preparation and to believe in what I knew and could bring to the table. So preparation became my coping mechanism. But more than that, I think it taught me a deeper lesson to really trust my knowledge and my potential. One of my favorite classes at MIDI was American Government and Civics. After class one day, Mr. Corsi approached me and asked me if I wanted to join a group of upperclassmen to head up to Sacramento for an event called Catholic Lobby Day, where hundreds of representatives from the Catholic Church would lobby their legislators on social justice issues that were important to them. I agreed, having no expectations as to what this would be like, and went through weeks of training with the rest of the group. And by the end of five weeks, we'd done several rounds of mock meetings and were ready. But just thinking about the real day and walking up the steps of the state capitol in itself was super nerve-wracking. But as I'd done before, I leaned on my preparation to carry me through. As fast as my heart pounded in the moments before our first meeting, Breaking down the components of our statements made it that much easier. We had the numbers and the statistics, the personal anecdotes, the statements from community leaders, all wrapped together by a great team with incredible excitement. And while I may have slipped up on a word or two, I did it. 14-year-old Shruthi presented her opinion to a legislator. And at the time, I couldn't have even believed that this was possible to be a 14-year-old student and to stack that up against decades of experience from a legislator. It was intimidating, to say the least. But I now had proof that this could work, that this legislator actually listened to us, respected our opinions, and had a productive, inspiring conversation with us. Underneath all our fear were our hearts on fire, emboldened with passion, confident in our potential and dedicated to our cause. To me, this experience was a turning point in how I viewed being fearless. I realized that age never has to limit our potential. You just have to trust in yourself and know you can really contribute and make a difference in that moment. So coming back from the trip, we knew that we could transform this experience into something bigger. So we started the MIDI Advocacy Project or MAP, which became the nation's first high school social justice effort focused on legislative advocacy. To play a small role in creating meaningful change years before we were even eligible to vote was super powerful. And we wanted to share that with as many other students as possible. But I will tell you that every part of building MAP was a huge moment of uncertainty. Nobody had done this before, so we had everything to gain but the possibility of failure right around the corner. And for as many successes that we had, we had just as many obstacles too. We had retention issues one year, difficulties with leadership in another, last minute cancellations at our events, and the toughest part of all of that was that we had some people questioning the effectiveness of what we were even doing in the first place. And as a leader of the organization, a lot of the buck stopped with me. And in those moments, I realized that being prepared could only take you so far, that so much of being fearless is about embracing the unexpected too. MAP taught me what it meant to be resilient, that we can swallow the difficult moments and have faith in what we do know, the core of why we do what we do and to believe in it. I learned through MAP to turn fear on its head into an opportunity to step up Remember your core and share your gifts with the world. Fast forward six years later, and there I was, having just graduated college and starting my first job in the real world. While I worked really hard and enjoyed the work I was doing, it was then when I first experienced the fear of losing a part of myself, 
my passion for social justice. I wasn't as involved in my community as I once had been, and I didn't really know how to bring that back in my day to day. So a couple years into that role, an opportunity came my way to participate in my company's Analyst Impact Fund, a competition where we could form teams with our coworkers and pitch a nonprofit to our executives to win funding. So with four of my peers, we came together and we found Annie Cannons, a nonprofit that trains survivors of human trafficking to become software engineers. We spent months with the team over there, immersing ourselves in their work, and for the first time, the joy and energy I'd experienced with MAP was coming back to me. We passed through the first couple rounds of the competition and made it through to the finals, where we would have to present to our CEO and our partnership committee. This was an incredible opportunity, but the overthinker in me couldn't help but build up an irrational fear. We were about to be judged by the most senior executives at our firm, people who probably had better things to do with their time than listen to a bunch of 20-something year olds, right? It was so easy in that moment to feel like an imposter and to let the weight of my own expectations bring me down. But I knew I'd done this before with MAP, and I knew I could do it again. So we ended up delivering a successful presentation and raised over $150,000 for Annie Cannons. And it was amazing to be able to leverage all the skills and experiences we'd gained from our jobs in finance and apply it to a cause we were passionate about. Looking back, I realized we don't have to search very far to make an impact in our day to day. Work or anything else we love doing can go hand in hand with making a difference if we're bold enough to try. Today, I'm about three months into a new job as an investor in technology startups. It's a role where I'm constantly out there, meeting with entrepreneurs, bringing back interesting ideas, and helping grow some pretty amazing companies. It's also a role where my identity as a young investor is often questioned by people I meet who are more used to interacting with folks who are at least 10 years older than me. Growing into my role definitely took me out of my comfort zone. There are still plenty of times where I'm nervous going into a meeting, knowing the experience gap, between myself and the person I'm about to meet. But if there's anything I've taken away from my past experiences, it's to squash any self-doubt with conviction and relentless belief. Yes, we may be young and not have years of experience, but we're all here for a reason, and each of us definitely has something meaningful to offer. The idea of being fearless in sharing ourselves with the world is beautifully described in the Gospel of Luke where the anxious crowds asked John the Baptist what they should do to prepare for the arrival of Jesus. John tells them, whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. It's a powerful statement about sharing our resources, our talents, and our passions with others as manifestations of God in our lives. Because being fearless is about living up to the responsibility that we have to be our true selves and to share our gifts with the world. And for me, my experience as a student in the MIDI community has inspired me to do just that. Thank you very much.